Thank you for joining us for our presentation on centering student expertise and agency within OER strategy development. My name is David Tully, and I'm the librarian of the student success and affordability at NC State University Libraries. And my name is Shari Stevens. I'm a alumnus of NC State class of 2022 and a former library student OER ambassador. To begin with then, a little bit about my background. For a number of years now, beginning with my work in the Libraries Fellows Program, I've been interested in and working on projects and initiatives which support student advocacy. Early on into my Fellows Initiative, I was invited to join the Libraries Alt Textbook Committee, which oversees our work in open education, such as advocating for and supporting our faculty in OER development, open pedagogy, and so on. I quickly came to see how these tools were perfectly in sync with my advocacy work, specifically, but not limited to, the cost savings piece of OER and the student agency factor of open pedagogy. In time, working in open became the forefront of a lot of the work alongside my other advocacy efforts, such as supporting the, the growth and management of student scholarships at the libraries, expanding our technology lending program to incorporate long-term device lending, which supports students otherwise without access to these vital resources and lots more projects. My drive for advocacy, particularly in education and OER, stems from many of my high school experiences. I was homeschooled until my junior year. And aside from the obvious adjustments that one would associate with entering this new environment, I was quickly made aware of the inequities that thrive in our education system, ranging from growth opportunities to basic materials. So when I first entered university, I spent my first week trying to gain footing on campus. I joined various clubs and university committees and leadership positions so that I could make change from the inside out. I transferred to NC State in the fall of 2020 during the height of the pandemic, but that drove me more to want to continue the same type of involvement because these issues of access are not unique to just one school. I quickly reached out to our student government and got involved in our executive board. However, however my first introduction to the libraries was through our student ombudsman. After speaking with him about a project I was interested in pursuing um, and years of sitting in classrooms several times at my former university, unable to participate because of textbooks being too expensive, I was determined to make sure this wouldn't happen to anyone else. And to my pleasant surprise, the All Textbook Committee in our Open Knowledge Center was already doing much of this good work. NC State Libraries have been active in the open education space for a number of years now. Our alt textbook program is coming up on a decade now, in that time supporting close to 100 different projects, while we've also had several different iterations of our open incubator. The open pedagogy incubator since 2019. So the libraries have been at the forefront of driving the conversation and advocating for the use of open educational tools at as a tool for student affordability and social justice for a while now. The Old Textbook Committee, which is typically comprised of librarians and library support staff, oversees the vast majority of the aforementioned work. And when that expertise is drilled down between us, the committee had expertise in things like copyright and fair use, um, publishing openly, finding and working with OER, subject specific knowledge, open pedagogy, OER advocacy, but as things progressed over the last few years, and we had more and more interest in uptake from faculty in, in OER and open pedagogy, I realized that we were missing some vital components to ensure that our work was in tune and ultimately equitable with our student body, and that was the student voice. And then, as that idea percolated, it became clear that I'd only solved half the puzzle because a voice alone can be limiting. And it was active and hands-on student expertise 
across a number of areas which would really enhance these efforts. In general, students are often mobilized to help drum up support for OER advocacy across different college campuses. But after working closely with student workers for a number of years now, I felt that bringing them on board for that alone overlooked their existing skills and limited the contributions they could make. Combining their unique insight with their, their real world expertise became the focus of this position's development. So the idea for a library's student OER ambassador began to form. In terms of recruiting for this position, we were fortunate that my path had already crossed with Sharia a year earlier. As Sharia mentioned previously, she had been referred to me by our student ombuds as she was interested in and performing research on college and university book equity. At her former university, Sharia had experienced not having the proper materials in the form of books or subscriptions to sites that contained things like homework. And she'd recognize that there are many other students that experience the same thing. We're getting into school is one issue, but half the battle is being equipped with the equitable resources needed to actually participate. So Sharia and I met and found that we were interested in and participating already in the same space. At that time, I was mainly updating her on how the libraries were trying to tackle these issues. And I was sending her some literature, which I thought was relevant, and we were meeting occasionally. But once the need for student representation in the Alt Textbook Committee became clear, Shirai was the first name which came to mind. So the position was developed with Shirai in mind, but bearing in mind that she was a senior and not far away from graduating, the position was intentionally developed with an eye on longer term student participation. So in essence, Shirai was laying the groundwork for another student to pick up the baton in the next academic year. In terms of the specifics of the role, the title of library student OER ambassador might be somewhat misleading because that doesn't act adequately describe the broad duties and responsibilities that are associated with the role. This includes serving on the Alt Textbook Committee and the University Academic Material Affordability Committee creating and distributing large-scale surveys to hundreds of students, securing vital data, which enables the libraries to continue to understand the current climate of textbook affordability across campus and strategize next steps based on that information. Also, you represent the libraries to students at outreach and other tabling events, support the development department with cultivation and prospective donors as well as stewardship of existing ones. Design outreach materials such as bookmarks, which communicates to students about the textbook lending program and how they can help advocate for the adoption of OER. Be the liaison between the libraries and the NC State chapter of PERG. Attend faculty senate meetings to discuss the impact of textbook costs and raise OER as a viable alternative and work with student government to introduce bills and legislation which call upon faculty members to consider OER when assigning textbooks and other materials to their students. So I'm pleased to say that the first semester of this position was hugely successful. We surpassed our initial expectations of what this role might achieve in such a short space of time achieved our goal of laying those foundations for the next incumbent and beyond. In fact, Sharai was recognized for her work at our annual student worker awards and given the libraries employs around 250 students and Sharai had only been in the position for a relatively short period of time, this underscores her achievement. In terms of how other colleges can adopt our model, we believe that first comes a recognition of the need for meaningful student representation, which goes beyond the role in advocacy, as important as it undoubtedly is. If you can reimagine some of your practices through the lens of student participation at the center of it, then this gives authenticity to your open education program. And what's more, provides new and exciting layers to the opportunities that it creates. The opportunity that was developed was 
flexible to the extent that I wasn't asked to clock in and clock out on specific times and days. There were rough deadlines of expected hours per week, but again, a great deal of flexibility attached to them because you're a student first. A weekly meeting was the only regular thing scheduled between David and I. Ultimately, I felt like a stakeholder in how I was prioritized and prioritized the work in the entree. And we found the right balance between what was exciting for me and the more general work that was necessary to continue to progress. We found that this type of agency was both important as the position was developed. In terms of recruitment, it was great that I already had a relationship with the libraries prior to starting this role. So recruiting for the next student will be different. Nevertheless, the experience that we all had in this position throughout these months taught us that targeted recruitment among students already interested in working in this space would be very beneficiary. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. Uh, thank you for listening to us today. We'd be pleased to answer any questions that you might have. So please, please feel free to contact either of us. Uh, myself at dltully at ncsu.edu or Shariah at shariah.stevens at gmail.com.